Well, the current treatment paradigm for early stage CLL patients that are asymptomatic is careful observation. So actually you only perform a physical examination and a blood count on a regular basis to capture the right moment of treatment indication for those patients. Well, actually, since careful observation is the treatment option, there are no really limitations to those treatment options. But it is hard for a physician to capture the right time point of treatment initiation because this patient subgroup is quite heterogeneous. You have some patients with a very indolent form of disease that will never be in need of any treatment during their whole life and others who are progressive, progressing quite rapidly to an aggressive form of CLL. So it's rather the time point that is very hard to capture for a physician. Well, in this trial, we wish to ask the question if early stage patients that are asymptomatic do benefit from an early treatment intervention with ibrutinib. And with this question, we try to ask whether or not we could delay time to chemoimmunotherapy since there haven't been a proven benefit of chemo or chemoimmunotherapy in this subgroup of patients. And as you might know, novel drugs act more specific on the B-cell compartment and are therefore less toxic. So ibrutinib was a very perfect comparator at that time point and it was not approved at the time point of study initiation. So actually, um, when comparing ibrutinib to placebo in this subgroup of patients, um, as expected, event-free survival, meaning time to symptomatic disease progression, was significantly longer in the ibrutinib group. But surprisingly, we also saw that the uh, majority of adverse events did not differ significantly between both groups. And the other um, very surprising part was probably time to next CLA treatment there were only 15 patients in the ibrutinib group that um, received a second CLL treatment, whereas there were 59 patients in the placebo group who received a second line treatment with, major with the majority of the patients receiving chemoimmunotherapy. So to answer the question, yes, we did delay the event-free survival and we did delay time to chemoimmunotherapy by early ibrutinib initiation and we didn't see any safety signal that would hesitate us from doing so. Well, actually patients with high risk genetic features such as TP53 mutation or 17P deletion are the patients that are most likely not to respond in the best way. And um, this is also true for the novel drugs. So still this is the high risk population is still the subgroup of CLL patients, the toughest to treat. And in which patients ibrutinib is contraindicated? Well, for this trial, it was clearly contraindicated in those patients who were at an increased risk of bleeding because ibrutinib is associated with an increased risk of bleeding. So we didn't, um, treat patients that were on concomitant use of anticoagulants that were the patients that were uh, contraindicated for ibrutinib. Well, as I previously pointed out, surprisingly, there was no significant difference in adverse events of any CTC grade nor of serious adverse events when comparing to placebo. But we also looked specifically at ibrutinib associated adverse events such as atrial fibrillation, hypertensive disorders, diarrhea and bleeding events. And of course those adverse events were increased in the ibrutinib group. And as I already pointed out, we didn't include any patients that um, also had an increased risk of bleeding by, for instance, using anticoagulants at the same time.